are going to be going over balance, the principle of design. Yeah, so let's get started with a definition. So balance is the use of the elements of art in a piece to create visual stability. All right, if I have like a sheet of paper in front of me, let's say that I have a little dude. Drawing him directly in the center, even though there's a lot of negative space around him, it still feels somewhat balanced because he's taking up just that right amount of space within that entire sheet. If I were to move him all the way down to the corner here, so then he gets kind of cut off like that. That feels more unbalanced because now I have all this space over here. It's not doing anything. It gets a little bit awkward to look at. So that's when it feels a little bit unbalanced. So often you're just able to tell when something isn't balanced just by looking at it. A lot of the times, if you look at a piece, you can tell if it's balanced or not because it won't feel awkward. It won't feel like things are placed a little bit odd. And there are a lot of different ways to figure out if something is balanced. So there are many, many different types of balance. We're going to go over about four to five of them. And they're often referred to as symmetry, different kinds of symmetry. So let's go over them. Let's go over the first type of symmetry, which is symmetrical and biaxial balance. You probably have heard this word, but maybe not this one. So symmetrical and biaxial balance or symmetry, it's when a piece is mirrored. So if you took that piece and you folded it perfectly in half, either down the center, either vertically or horizontally, both sides will perfectly overlap with one another. It can be either horizontal or vertical. If you have your piece, you put a line directly down the center of it and you folded that piece in half, if you hold it up to the light or something, you should be able to see that it is mirrored exactly right on both sides. There's like almost no differences or no differences at all. And that tends to be perfect symmetry. But if it's mirrored both horizontally and vertically, if you folded it into four squares and they all line up perfectly, that's biaxial symmetry. If I got my big circle in the center again, and now there's circles in every corner, right? If I folded this, each of these corners are basically the same thing. So this one is biaxial. Perfect symmetry and biaxial symmetry tend to eliminate variety because of how perfectly mirrored they are. And often within our perfection, like symmetrical perfection tends to be avoided because it creates a lot of unity, it lacks variety. But a place where you do see a lot of perfect symmetry is architecture. So the Taj Mahal was designed by Ustad Ahmed Lowry. Oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> in 1632. But the beautiful thing about the Taj Mahal, it is perfectly symmetrical on both sides. If I was to flip this, right? Look at that. Perfectly symmetrical on both sides. Even the plants are almost perfectly symmetrical, right? If I were to just take this line, perfectly symmetrical down the center. So the Taj Mahal is an example of perfect symmetry. So approximate symmetry is when it's close to perfect symmetry, but it's just a little off. If you fold it in half, the balance, like the space, the negative space and positive space that's being taken up is pretty close. It's almost the same but it isn't perfect. It's like it has maybe these different objects that they've used, maybe they've placed them in different places, maybe it's that they're using different colors, or maybe they're using different, you know, it's like it's close but not exact. So approximate symmetry tends to have a little bit more visual interest compared to perfect symmetry because you have different elements on either side of your piece. It's not all exactly the same. It kind of has that same satisfying energy of symmetry, but when you have a little bit of that variety within there, it has that greater sense of satisfaction, I find. It's the delivery of the keys to St. Peter by Pietro Perugino from 1481. So it's almost perfectly symmetrical. You can look at the background, the actual buildings themselves, that's practically symmetrical. If I were to flip this, yeah, it's practically symmetrical. However, the people are. When you have them almost symmetrical, their balance is basically the same. However, if you flip it, they're not exact on both sides, right? You have this guy crouching. So the people in the background, obviously, if you mirror them back and forth, it's not like you can fold it and they're the exact same on both sides, but their balance is really, really close to being exact. So that's why you'd call it approximate because it's almost there, but not quite. So radial symmetry is when your elements move outwards from a point. It's like following the pattern of a star. But it is basically, you start from one point, but most of the time within the center. If you want to kind of add some variety, some people start from a corner, like one of the rules of thirds, or slightly off center, whatever. Everything tends to move outwards from a point, and it creates almost circular, spiral-like pattern around that center point. So all sides are mirrored more than two times. So with biaxial, you only have horizontal and vertical mirrored. With radial symmetry, it's more than that. This one is the mandala of the forms of Manjushri. This piece is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It comes from Tibetan culture. And because it's so ancient, we, we don't know the artist, but it comes from the late 14th century. That's when it was created. This is an example of perfect radial symmetry. It can be perfectly split down horizontally and vertically, but it can also be split in these directions as well. So it has for eight different sections that it can be mirrored almost exactly across. 
which means that it is a form of very symmetrical radial symmetry. Asymmetrical balance is the opposite of symmetrical balance. So there are no sides that are appeared, but overall everything still feels visually balanced. So it feels like there's a good amount of positive space on one side, a good amount of positive space on the other side. It feels like there's a good amount of negative space on all ends, and it's not mirrored at all. There's no mirroring, but it still feels visually. So this is the most common form of balance, but it takes a better eye since it often utilizes the rule of thirds or other compositional techniques in order to feel correct compared to symmetry, which is like, it doesn't really use those compositional techniques as much as asymmetry does because asymmetry tends to be more visually interesting compared to symmetry. This is a perfect example of asymmetrical balance. The reason I chose this one, not be just because it's Kirby, and I love Kirby, um, is because there's a lot of simple forms in here. Kirby uses a lot of just circles. But the great thing with this one is you can't flip anything. If you took this piece or this cover, you flip it, there is nothing on here that's mirrorable. On the contrary, everything still feels visually weighted. You have these two. Kirby is our largest object here. It takes up the majority of the space, so he's also our focal point. He takes up two points, two points of our rule of thirds. If we split this down, into here, like that grid, he takes up two different points of a rule of thirds, which makes him more visually important compared to everything else. There's also text. Text will always be the first thing that your eyes go to in graphic design. So you read the text first, then you see Kirby using leading lines. You go out here. So we actually do have a bit of radial symmetry here. It starts from around here with all the stars going outwards. But those stars point down directly to these other characters, which take up approximately the same amount of positive space as the one larger object, which means that it creates this asymmetrical balance. It feels visually weighted properly using different sized objects. The same with the sword, right? The sword takes up about the same amount of visual energy as all three of the different objects here. And they're nice and spaced, right? You have a good amount of negative space in between everything, which balances out very nicely as well. How we do balance is usually determined based on our theming and our mood. I'm actually going to take inspiration from the Kirby anime. And I'm actually going to go with approximate symmetry, just because approximate symmetry in this case will work a little bit better for what I'm planning. Oh, you know what? Let's do something fun. Let's work with a bit of perspective with light. If you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon. You know, maybe I'll stick with the colors of the show. It was a lot of browns, browns and pinks. There we go. Oh, I like that blue better. And then obviously Kirby is that pink. So I guess because this isn't like perfect, perfect, I'd still call this approximate symmetry. It's about as perfect as I can get it, basically, without any symmetrical symmetry tools. And what this grid does is it gives me a bit of perspective. Let's give him some random lighting because that'll help a little bit with the forms. A little bit of lighting out here as well. Just a little bit rough. He's gonna have this kind of uh, subsurface scattering right here. And he's gonna have the core shadow and then there's gonna be a bit of bounce light on the other side. Shadows are going to be sharper here, but as you go a little bit farther, shadows will soften their edges. So they won't be like perfectly sharp. Depending on the proximity, shadows will lose their form the farther away from the physical object they are. Yeah, to have the natural, the shadow feel a lot more natural, you gotta have it fade out as it gets farther away from the main subject. There 
There we go. Dimension gives you a bit more of that space compared to just being a flat color. I'll probably put an overlay layer over all this as well, just to get my, my color balance corrected a little bit more. I am actually gonna have to create a new layer of tiles. Multiply layers are your best friend. I just hope you know that. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. Multiply layers are the best. So I'm not trying to get these tiles perfect. I'm trying to get them. Give me a gen let them have give me a general idea. So things will recede as you go farther into perspective, right? We've done a perspective stream, but I'll kind of go over it again. So things as you when you draw them, right, will recede as they go farther back into space. That's just, that's the case with these tiles, right? Because the spaces between them should get larger as they come closer to you, right? And that creates that sense of it should go farther back. Because Kirby has a bit of bounce light on me. He's got a bit of that blue bounce light. So I've got to emulate that within the other surrounding area as well. Or else it'll feel randomly placed, which you don't want, right? Should be deliberate. So I've got to place it on the other sides of these tiles as well. Tiles are like a great way to make something appear a little bit more 3D. It's a really good strategy. It creates another sense of 3D-ness. It gives you back those 3D forms that you kind of lose within a piece like this that feels a little bit more flat, but it gives it back to you a little bit, which is nice with, with tiles. In this episode, he does get a hold of a knife. I remember, he gets in the kitchen. Because of the knife, it's gonna be approximate symmetry, so not perfect symmetrical balance, but we're gonna go with something more approximate. When you have just something that's straight red, add a little bit of orange to it. Like it probably looks great just as the straight red as well, but giving it that bit of orange will give your red a lot more dimension, especially if you want to add some like extra kind of glow to it. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss an upload. Join our art community with the links down below if you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education. Become a member on Patreon for working files, behind the scenes posts, and discounts on our class offerings. If you enjoyed this video, here's a couple other videos you can check out next.